my job is to take you a little bit higher up the mountain. Uh, so we're now starting at Everest Base Camp and progressing up the uh, Kumbu Icefall. Uh, we had a couple of overnight stop camps, so nothing of substance at Camp 1 or Camp 3, but we had fixed laboratories at Camp 2 and at Camp 4. Camp 4 is on the south col, just under 8,000 metres. And we made the highest measurements uh, way up on the southeast ridge at about 8,400 meet metres, so about 400 metres below the summit of Everest. This gives you some impression of what the Kumbu Icefall is like. So this is probably about a tenth of uh, this very chaotic, uh, what's essentially a very slow-moving waterfall of ice that you see when you look from Everest Base Camp. It stretches for about 900 vertical metres uh, steeply until you get to this relatively flat valley, the so-called Western Coon. And Everest, in fact, is, is unique in that it has these ladders, the traffic of people going through uh, because of the large number of people that climb Everest, uh, and not only the climbers but all the, the Sherpas who are, who are helping them, uh, and in fact without whom it wouldn't happen at all. The traffic is such, and the crevasses are so big that they have these ladder bridges. In some years they get up to four or five ladder, uh, ladders long, uh, and they're, they're quite nerve-wracking to cross, as you can imagine. That's, that's looking downwards, probably about 60, 70 feet to the bottom of, uh, of one of these crevasses. We, we used to hate going across them. We had a particular goal, and that was uh, in, in terms of the, and I'm focusing now on the extreme altitude uh, measurements, and that was to make this, or attempt to make this measurement on the top of Everest, which had never been made before, which was the level of oxygen in the arterial blood, so the, the redder blood that's pumped out of the heart, uh, having been to the lungs, it's got hopefully, normally at sea level, plenty of oxygen in it, up here a lot less oxygen, because we wanted to know what the level was in individuals on the summit of Everest. For a long time there was a lot of scepticism that it would be possible for man to reach the summit of Everest. Once it was worked out that man or humans could reach the summit of Everest, what was clear was that it was absolutely on the cusp of what could be achieved. It was right at the limit of what uh, some humans could survive, and many humans probably wouldn't be able to do that at all. So understanding what the measurement would be at that sort of edge of the envelope situation uh, was very interesting to us. We, as I've said, reached the summit of Everest, but it was about minus 25 degrees and about 20 knots of wind, so significant wind chill. And uh, as we were planning to take the samples from the uh, large arteries in our groin, uh, we, I think, prudently decided that it would be best not to take those samples uh, in those conditions. Uh, and instead, we descended for about 400 metres uh, down to this place here, which is known as the balcony, which is a relatively small flat area uh, where you can erect a small shelter. It was about a couple of hours later in the day. It's a little bit warmer, uh, out of the wind, and we took uh, four femoral, so groin artery blood samples to get as close as we could to this measurement of what the arterial level is uh, on the summit of Everest. In intensive care, we start to get nervous when uh, patients have an oxygen level that falls uh, below eight. So. Initially, we would give them some supplemental oxygen, and if that's not keeping their oxygen level above eight, then we would put them on a mechanical ventilator and keep on turning up the oxygen and, and use a variety of therapies to keep their oxygen level up. If you trek to Everest Base Camp, uh, like these individuals, you're already more hypoxic than the patients that we see in the vast majority of patients in intensive care. And all these people have come back fine. As you go higher up the mountain, uh, the oxygen level in the atmosphere is getting lower and lower and the oxygen level in your blood is getting lower and lower so it's now under half uh, what it is at sea level for us now and as you go higher still those levels get lower and lower until we see these numbers and these are the the lowest values in terms of kilopascals uh, ever measured in humans and obviously the highest measurements in, term, in terms of altitude and we have uh, one individual here who's got a PaO2 of about 2.3 kilopascals uh, with others with a slightly higher measurement, which takes us back very neatly to what Monty was talking about. Uh, and this uh, strange uh, consequence, um, first uh, enunciated in the 1930s by a famous British scientist called Joseph Barcroft, of Everest in utero, the idea that all of us have gone through this experience in our fetal existence that is the same as that which one would experience on top of Everest, and which for us is so fascinating because maybe that's what you, the people who do well in intensive care, maybe that's what they're reawakening, if you like. They're reactivating those mechanisms that allowed them to thrive in the foetus and therefore allows them to survive uh, as adults who are critically ill. The huge team of people, and in particular the Sherpas, and this is one of my favourite shots, this is our immediately post-descent uh, shot. There's a lot of drawn and tired faces. 
And two reasons it's, it's one of my favourite shots is firstly, we, we just sat down and we, we became very close with our Sherpa uh, colleagues and then friends. And when we sat down, the whole group just mixed in together. So there's some of our team, some of the Sherpas, and you can't really tell who's who. Uh, and the second reason is that we were, uh, through, in part through good planning and in part through good luck, we were, we were fortunate to get everyone down safe. And it wouldn't have been too clever to go and do some sort of a medical research expedition like this and harm someone, but we were uh, really grateful that we did get everyone down safe. So I'm going to leave it there with a huge thank you to the team.